What's going on, Spit and Chicklets fans? Biz here, and thanks for tuning in to another edition of the ECHL Player Relief Fund interview series brought to you by Boikies. What is Boikies, you ask? Boikies is a delicious air dried beef biltong. It's a healthier version of jerky made in the USA with high quality ingredients. More protein, half the sodium, and zero sugar. Not only does Boikies make an amazing product, but they have been generous enough to donate $10,000 to the ECHL Player Relief Fund and will be offering fans a Biz20 promo code for any product on the boikies.com website for 20% off. We know times are not easy right now, so we're trying to give you as much content as we can. So we hope you enjoy this interview, and please stay safe, and once again, thank you to Boikies. Our next guest is now in his 12th NHL season and his 8th as a Philadelphia Flyer. An all-star forward, he's averaged .75 points per game in his career, not too shabby. He's a legend in his native Czech Republic, and he's becoming a legend here in Philadelphia as well. Thanks for joining us on Spit and Chicklets, Jacob Varchuk. Thanks, guys, for having me. Absolutely. I was waiting for this day for a hey, long time. Listen, I was told a long time ago by uh, one of our you know, most famous recurring guests, Mike Commodore, you got to get Voracek on. <laughs> this guy, apparently these two were just boys back in the, in the Columbus days. So you right away you hit it off with Kami. Well, I had no choice. Uh, you know, I, uh, I mean, I made a team and, uh, you know, the older guys were picking uh, roommates for the uh, for the road, obviously. And, uh, you know, Kami picked me. How lucky I was. He's like, this, this guy looks at me, so when they check the surveillance of people coming in on time, it might yeah. look like I'm, I was actually, actually home before 12 o'clock. But little did he know is you were going to be his running mate. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, Kami was, uh, I would say he was uh, top three guys I've ever played with. You guys, he, he's, he's awesome. A, he's a great guy. He's, he's so loyal. He's funny, too. Like, fuck. Like, yeah. I, I had a lot of fucking loss well, you, with him. You caught him kind of in a weird time where he was... He was getting screwed over a little bit in Columbus. <laughs> well, he was throwing well, money on well, himself well, well, in, a, in, a, in a dark closet. Like, <laughs> well, at least that's how he says it. Yeah. <laughs> no, he did. He did. I'll get to that later. But, uh, you know, my first year, it was his first year in Columbus. So we were roommates. He was playing first deep air with Jan Heida. He was having an amazing season. Right? And he was getting fucked over third year when Scott Arniel got hired. So, uh yeah, he didn't. They didn't like each other very much. Well, he told me a funny story about you two. He said the front office wit. He used to be all over me about Voracek diet. He goes, this guy would crush six bags of peanut M and M's in the in the room on the road, and I used to catch the heat from everyone. So he was always getting shit on about your diet. Yeah, he uh, he did. I was uh, I wasn't really a good pro, you know, back in the day. I would say, but uh, you no, I, I cleaned up a little bit, you know. Otherwise, I wouldn't be playing right now. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, they were asking him all the time, what am I eating, if I'm drinking, you know, if I'm, you know, what am I doing at the rooms, what time <laughs> yeah, I'm going yeah, to the vodka, bed. champagne. How yeah. would they know? And Kami, Kami would never bury you, right? Oh, so that's wow. what I'm saying. Yeah, How would they so, know you were eating yeah. six bags of peanut M&M's? No, Kami's telling me that. Kami's oh. telling me that, but the front office would be like, what's this kid eating? Yeah. And he's like, meanwhile, we get to the room and he's pounding <laughs> M&M's. Well, I, when I was younger, I always had a problem with body fat, right? Coming me from too. the Czech, yeah, tell me about coming it. from the Czech, I mean, you know, when you look at the Czech food, I mean, we had the boys over there in the beginning of the October uh, for a season opener. I was like, now you guys fucking understand why my body fat was always high until I get my shit together, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> for the last five, six years. So, uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, we had a lot of fun with Kami. Fuck, he was, uh, like I said, he was one of the best. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of, lot of good stories that uh, obviously you can... You know, tell them all, but some of them can. Let's talk about Czech and growing up there and playing. I mean, I, we were talking about the world premiere games recently and how uh, Pasternak ended up going to watch the, yeah. the 09, uh, 09 10, 010. 10 11 Bruins or, when the Bruins played the Coyotes. Yeah. And now next year they're opening up there, like full circle for the kids. Right. Like, I mean, like, did you get the experience uh, in watching any NHL games live? Like, who, who were your inspirations growing up? Because, I mean, there's a ton of unbelievable Czech players. Well, I'm from. Same town as Jagd, right? So, oh, Kladno? Yeah. So during the oh. 90s, you know, when I mean, when communism fell apart in 89, that's when Jagd stepped in in 90, right? 1990. He got drafted. He started playing. He was becoming one of the best players. So you get that TV coverage back home from uh, from the NHL, and he was the number one player. So there was him, you know, everywhere. So obviously he was the number one along with Dominic Hasek and uh, – you know, Pittsburgh my was favorite team, and, uh, you know, he was just crushing it. I think he was the best player in the 90s back in the day. And, uh, 
Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. So uh, you know, when I got to play with him, my first year in oh. Philly, it was a lot of fun as well. Well, uh, didn't Hasek win a gold medal at the Olympics? Yeah, ninety eight. Nagano. Yeah. Yeah. Where were you when that happened? That must have been. Like I was uh, eight years old. I was uh, because of a time change, and I was in Japan. So the finals, it was in uh, like uh, five thirty a.m. So all basically. Whole country was up at 5:30 and watching hockey. Do you remember that kind of clearly? Yeah, even I, I think everybody remembers yeah, that day. So because unreal. it was the first gold medal in uh, in the history of Czech Republic, like uh, Czechoslovakia, uh, hockey medal, gold medal, and uh, yeah, it was it was till now it's been 21 years, and everybody's remembered that day. So I heard uh, stories y- y- when Yager was younger, like he'd do like a thousand squats a day like there were there were just like old stories about him all all from where you grew up like people must have known so many different yeah, things hundred hundred push-ups thousand squats a day so that's he was doing yeah yeah his dad was uh you know i think one time he was telling him that if he do that he's gonna buy him new skates so he started training and he actually did it so uh that's awesome. i tried to do it one time when i was like 11 <laughs> or 10 uh, i passed the fuck out by like seven, <laughs> by 7 30 so i was like fuck this like <laughs> It's yeah, not yeah. worth it. Yeah. We, we talked to obviously a lot of Canadians and Americans here, not a ton of Euros. What was a typical day for a young Jake Voracek in Czech Republic? What, like, what did you do as a kid all the time? Was it just hockey or did you do other shit? Well, in the winter, it was hockey. In the summer, I played tennis and soccer. Oh. So I was, you know, always surround myself with the sports, which I don't think the kids do much these days. Yeah, they seem to focus on just yeah. one nowadays. Yeah, just Fortnite and fucking, you know, <laughs> and those kind of stuff. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, so it was uh, tennis, soccer, and summer hockey in the winter. By 13, I, I choose, uh, obviously, hockey. I think that was the right decision. So Is that when you kind of started separating from the rest of the pack when people realized, okay, this kid's better than everybody else? Yeah, I was always playing with uh, two, three years older guys. And, uh, you know, you never know until you really make it that you're yeah. going to make it one day. So I was starting slowly. You know, I played juniors. I won a uh, scoring race there. Then I went to Halifax. You know, I started pretty good there and, you know, got drafted. But when I was skating my first game in Dallas you know like I was first couple of shows I was like holy fuck like I made it to the show you know, <laughs> no I, way I was looking around Modano was flying with his jersey behind him you know what I mean I was like wow like this, yeah. is, this is real you know growing up like you know in Canada and America you start playing on travel teams at 11 and 12 you're going to Canada for tournaments or different states would you just play in Czech or would you go to, were you going to tournaments in Sweden or Russia or was it always just within your country? Well, well around like 13, 14. U6, six, U16, yeah. we started traveling a little bit with Czech, U17, 18, then the World Juniors, right? But uh, I didn't get to Canada for first time until I went to Halifax. So when I went to Halifax, I, that was my first time. I saw my first NHL game in Ottawa. They played Vancouver. That was 2006, I think. 2007, maybe I can I can't remember right it gets now. Gets a little exactly. foggy. It does. <laughs> Fuck, it's, it's going down the road. <laughs> so, like, how does a young kid even get over to the Quebec League? I mean, how did that all come about when you're like, all right, let's go play junior before my draft? Yeah, my agent, uh, Peter Svoboda, he uh, he asked oh, me if I no want to. Yeah, yeah he's a he's a legend too. Oh my god, like, <laughs> I've like, heard. So I, I know his daughter Sarah, and like, Sarah, yeah? I, she's yeah. like, we got to get my dad on. Well, she said this a long time ago. I ran yeah. into her, but he is a legend. I've he's, heard some funny he, stories. I've he's heard. He's a funny fucker too. Yeah. Like, okay, a, we'll get him on. It's more uh, right now. It's more like a friendship relationship than agent and player, right? Just so what you want. Really. Exactly. By the down the road, and when I hit thirty, that's exactly what you're looking for. So uh, he asked me if I want to go to like uh, play CHL. I was like, well. You know, let me think about that. So I was always a mama's boy. <laughs> so she uh, she didn't take it very well. But uh, but you wanted to. I wanted to. I, I thought it was the right decision for me, and uh, I think it paid off pretty good. So uh, yeah, you're in your draft at the Halifax. I was drafted first overall. The junior. In the, yeah, in the Euro, uh, well, Halif- that video. must have been such a fun yeah. city to play in. That's one of the top junior teams in the CHL. It's a decent city. There's a pulse there. The late, <laughs> hey, I would say other than Winnipeg, maybe the most underrated women in all of Canada. Biz knows. Biz knows. Yeah. Well, we were there this summer. I mean, Biz knows, <laughs> knows. Halifax. Halifax was it, was it was awesome, man. Like it's, uh, I had a great billet, which was a good start. You know, I mean, you know, for them, you gotta give them credit to take on a kid that doesn't speak any fucking English, right? No shit. So you didn't speak you didn't a speak lick, any? man. No, nothing. So wow. I showed up there. It's great. I didn't, now. I, I didn't yeah. know. What to, I didn't understand anything. You speak French too. All I wanted to know if I'm gonna have my six pack in the fridge at night. 
<laughs> and I'll be I'll be good. You know what I mean. So I always like to have a, like one or two beers at night. Yeah. You know, since uh, since the young age. Nine. And, uh, my dad was my dad, my dad was always telling me you'll sleep better, buddy. Go on, have, have a couple, man. You'll sleep better. All right. So, <laughs> Your dad did. Yeah, my dad. Yeah. Instead, uh, like, instead of like popping, you, you know, Ambien or t- whatever, try to fall asleep. You know, have a couple beers, man. You'll feel better. So. How young were you when when you started crushing a few before bed? Be honest. Twelve well, years old? No, I don't know. It's 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 different back home, right? I was I was a tall guy, obviously, but uh, yeah, I would say. What is the drinking age? Eighteen. Oh, okay, it doesn't matter. It's, it's check, right? It's so, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, well, I was playing with three years older, so uh, you know, at AAA juniors, they were seventeen, eighteen. I was fourteen, so there you go. They were always after Saturday. You know, game That's fucking like, it's, like, it's like high school hockey, kind of. If a yeah. freshman makes the team, and I the mean, 14, out, 14 years yeah. old, having a few watching the boob tube before bed. Well, I, mean, I was in Braintree. He was in Prague or Kladno. I mean, there's a little different lifestyle. <laughs> but when you're 14. I gotta, to be honest, I gotta give myself credit. I always knew uh, whatever happened that night and next day, I gotta put a work in since the young age. Old so school, no matter, old school yeah. from the beginning. So no matter what happened, you know, I kind of had my head locked in and, uh, you know, knew what I needed to do to. Sweat it out. <laughs> you're like the you're like the Czech Chelios. Yeah, I, kinda, I heard <laughs> the know? stories about him too. Yeah, yeah he's the Czech Chelios. Yeah. Hey, you remind me a lot. I don't know if you're friends with with Hemsky, but I got to play with Hammer, and he was the same way. Hammer loved his beers, but he worked his dick off and was always ready to play. And I love that guy. But you just are you buddies with him? Yeah, and I I know him. We played a couple of times. We played uh, Olympics together, World yep. uh, another World Cup, but the World Championship. And uh, yeah, he's a he's a funny guy too. He is. Uh, Easy going, you know, really easy back going. and just, just, uh, just a beauty. Nothing, nothing really bothers him, you know. No, not at all. What was the culture shock like going from Czech Republic to Halifax and barely speaking any English? How, how long did that take to adjust? Well, I got lucky because when I stepped on the, no, well, let's uh, let's back it up a little bit. So I showed up in Halifax. I don't speak any English. There's a training camp starting, right? So. F- I walk in. I'm about buck eighty, right? Six two, buck eighty. Twenty nine percent body fat. No, no, I was skinny. I was oh, okay, skinny. Okay, I okay. was skinny. And uh, so first guy I see is Kirk Forrest, which was our tough guy back in the day. And uh, he's about six five, two thirty lean, right? So I'm like, like, what the fuck am I gonna do here? Like, <laughs> like, are you guys serious? Like, like, I, I want to go home. Fuck, this guy's in know? the same league as me. Yeah, he scares me. <laughs> you know, then he steps on the ice. Obviously, you know, he was tripping off. You know his own feet, but <laughs> <laughs> like I was, uh, I stepped on. I was like, all right, I can, I can, you know, I can probably make something happen here. And I, you know, confidence build up, and I started playing, and I enjoy every single game and every single day in Halifax. It was awesome. Fuck so, it was so regular season game wise, uh, to adapt to North American style of play didn't take you very long. I started. Uh, 11 game point streak in Halifax so uh, what's this deal. league <laughs> yeah no no I was, is, that, uh, is that good <laughs> so I was I got I got lucky because for a European guy right like uh, obviously you're taking jobs away from the guys that live there right so if you're good enough obviously they they know that you're there to help them you know the team help and like you're gonna find a way to uh, to help them win some games so I kind of gained respect I would say you know in a training camp the way I was playing and uh, everybody took it easy on me it's true because if you go in as an import where they use a high pick and you don't do anything it's easier to be resentful in terms of this guy's not even talking to any of us and not that that's your fault but some guys get lucky in that they'll come over from Europe to the CHL and there'll be another guy, countryman on the team. But there was no other Czech guys. It was. There? It was. Okay. I was. I was lucky. So he was translating. He was helping. So that was kind of necessary. It almost. was. It was. It was nice. It was nice. And everybody was trying to help me. You know, yeah. to get better in English. And uh, really, all the guys were kind of nice to me. So it's. Uh, it was. It was a good feeling. Was it more watching TV or just in the locker room where you really learned? Locker room, but more like uh, well, the hockey stuff you kind of pick up right away. Yeah. Right? it's the same shit all the time. Yeah, you know, chip it in, chip yeah. it out. <laughs> we, know. we had a Czech kid on Shoot. our team for, uh, <laughs> he, and he was drafted in the import draft, and I felt bad because he just really wasn't adapting well. And uh, one of his last practice, uh, Chris Thorburn was skating ahead of him, and this Tomas Chabi. Do you know who that is? Who? Tomas Chabi was his name. Chabi. And he's from he's from the Czech Republic. Chabi. Chabi. <laughs> 
That doesn't sound like a Czech Republic name. Well, that, well, maybe I was saying his name wrong the entire time I was playing with him. Then that's why the kid hated it. It's like this fucking guy's calling me Chubby. I I'm remember chubby. we. I remember he was a smelly fella too. But Chris <laughs> Thorburn was was skating, and this this Tomas Chubby kid, if I'm saying it right, was back checking. He slid his lip from here to here, and oh. he was he wasn't playing well. He wasn't getting oh. a lot of ice time, and then I think that's what did him in. I thought maybe you would have known you him. You know why it can be really easy to be like fuck this, I'm going back. Right? Yeah. So you know, but. Like I said, my billets were great. They were just here a couple, couple last week. Oh, you're still friendly with them. That's friendly. awesome. Oh, yeah, they're like my second parents. So that's awesome. Huh. So then, then you know, team was great. I was having a good time. Like everything kind of just fall in, and uh, you know, I really enjoyed every day of it. So, so your draft year, um, that was after your second year. In, in my Hull? first year. Okay, so after your first year, so you go back, light it up that year, so you're ready for the, you're ready for the NHL. Yeah. You get to Columbus, and you're a really high pick, and. I mean, looking at it now and the player you've turned into, would you not say they gave up on you a little bit early? Well, it's tough to say. There was a problem, like Kami was saying, with uh, with the coach, right? There a little bit. I, uh, From what I remember, uh, by November we were playing against Detroit for the the first place in the conference, right? We lost the game 2-1 or 2 nothing, something like that. And since then we went downhill. Like we started losing. There was, uh, there was bad atmosphere and... Uh, I don't think it was handled properly from the from the coaching staff there towards Comey or towards me. I mean, you know, but like I said, uh, sometimes the change happened for a reason, and uh, I'm I'm very glad that it happened though. Do you think you got grouped in because you and Comey were so close, and and he had it out for Comey, and he probably knew you guys were hanging away, hanging out away from the rink? It's a possibility. I don't think it was only me, but after I got traded here, you know, there was some other guys. There was Brass too, and Derek Brassard. He was getting shit on as well the next year, and uh, you know. But so, the thing so, is, the well, thing is, is it, true, is it true? Arneal told you you're going to be out of the league in two years. In two this years, this is twelve yeah. years later, and a yeah. bunch of millions. Oh, yeah, he told me that. Like, he come said, on, buddy, what, what are you was, talking about? Yeah. So was he just that's the type of guy he was, or do you think it maybe the the situation got a bit overwhelming for him? I think, I think, I think the pressure got to him. In my opinion, you know, it was his first year as a head coach. He wanted to prove himself, you know, that he's a good coach. Well, and you started well and all of a sudden then you you know but next year you know reportedly he was yelling at the guys that they stealing money from his family and yeah, you know, sure. I remember we lost the game before Christmas and he goes like Merry fucking Christmas and left the rocker room like you know like like we uh, didn't want to lose yeah, we like, were, <laughs> we, we know, wanted to win before Christmas, coach. Well, now I now I kind of do a little bit, so you're not here anymore. <laughs> and it was it was kind of hard. Like I was, uh, I knew I was a little bit under his radar and uh, he. Uh, I played two games. I had three points before Christmas or after Christmas. I can't remember right now. And he helped to scratch me back to back games, right? After Christmas. I was like, well, I, uh, you know, I had three points in the last two games. I think I played pretty good. He was like, no, you didn't, blah, 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 whatever. So I got healthy. And since then, I think the relationship kind of started falling apart. And then by by April, he'll told me I'll be out of the league in two years if I don't get shit my, my shit together, which I don't know what does that mean until today. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, I, I think, think I proved okay. I think I proved him wrong. I think it worked out. Yeah. Wow! But before him, you played you played a couple of years for Hitch. Yeah. What was it like playing for him? Did you did you like it? You know what? When I look at it back in the day, you know, when you're 19, 20, you don't really you don't really understand what the coach wants from you. Mm -hmm. Why is he giving you hard time? But I gotta give him credit that uh, I wouldn't be the player I am right now if I didn't have H when I was that young. Really? Yeah. What like specifically? What like the, just the way he pushed? Just, you? just hard. Push me yeah. hard on you. Like you kind of don't understand. You can wrap your head around it at the beginning, right? So, yeah. uh, I mean, you're focusing on a little bit more details because as a young guy, you're usually all over the place, right? You do whatever the fuck you want yeah. on the ice. Yeah, you don't worry about defense, especially a guy like yeah. you just creating offense. Yeah, you don't. You know, and he he was harping, 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 and. Uh, you know, he uh, he helped me in a lot of lot of things. So you get there, and obviously you meet Hitch. Is it hard for you to take him seriously? Maybe when he's giving you advice as a hockey player, considering <laughs> like, I mean, he's clearly never played, yeah. right? Is is that part of where you're like, is this guy really telling me what 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 he thinks is right and that that I should be doing? Like, were were, were you not trusting him off the hop? Uh, well, I think the record for him. You know, speaks. I mean, he's I don't know on all time list how many wins. Sure, he's yeah, got. Of course. But like you look at him as a respectful coach, and won the cup. And I could see it at the beginning, like we made a playoffs right away, you know. But uh, 
you know, with him yapping, yapping, yapping. I mean, <laughs> it gets on your it gets on your nerves a little bit sometimes. Like for me, I was young, I had to keep my mouth shut. But uh, you know, the older guys uh, sometimes they didn't take it very well. Did you ever end up telling him to fuck off? Because they he, he seemed to like when players would tell him to fuck off. It happened a couple of times. Yeah, <laughs> it happened a couple of times. 19. But he never he fuck never. Fuck off. That's the difference between Great the account. coaches, right? He never takes it personally. Right? right, right. Like he likes it the way you are in the game, and uh, it just. It's just a different approach from those guys. Yeah, because you're showing fire. Like, you know, yeah, okay, this yeah, guy like, cares. He's telling yeah, me to fuck off. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was uh, a couple of times that happened. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it was Did you, uh, Revo was saying that one time, he, he like Revo, who was young too at the time with St. Louis, he turned around and, and, and was pretty vicious. And the next day, he they were in the hallway, I think, walking out to practice. And, and Revo was like, hey, man, sorry about saying that. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, just, so he just yeah, he's like water of off a of the game. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, you know like I said, it's the old school type, right? Yeah, you get into that, you try to win the game, you try to do the same thing. <laughs> when you got traded here, what what did you know about Philly when you got traded here? Yeah, Anything? were you fired up to get traded too at that point? Well, I had no idea, right? I mean, I uh, I was training in Montreal and I got a phone call from a development coach Tyler Ride. You guys probably remember him, mm-hmm. Ryder. So he, uh, that's before the draft. That's the day before the draft. So he called him. He was like, how are you feeling? I was like, yeah, I feel great. You know, I've been here for two weeks already, and that's before the draft. So I've been here two weeks. Uh, you know, I'll be here for another three months. Like, you know, I really... You were staying all summer in... In Montreal, Col- yeah, three months. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll be... I'll, Decent you know, city. Yeah, I'll be, I'll, I'll be ready to go. You know, like, I'll, I'm really, like, focusing on, you know, preparing for a season. And uh, he goes like, perfect, perfect. Uh, let me call you in five minutes. I was like, all right. So I hung up the phone, went to sit on the couch. He's calling me. Uh, Scott Housen's calling me five minutes later. He's like, oh, Jake, we traded you to Philadelphia. He's like, what did I say? I was like, <laughs> like, like, this is a joke or something? Like, what the fuck happened? Like, in those five minutes. Call like, me? You know what I mean? Call me, is that you? <laughs> 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 so I got traded for Carr uh, and, uh, you know, along with first round and third rounder and, uh, you know, kind of talked with the other guys from Columbus and, uh, what a deal for Philly on by that the, one. By huh? the next year, by the next year, half of the team was fucking traded. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so just to get draft picks along with you, and then Carter's out of there by Christmas time, and yeah. what a wild time that was for yeah, that. And up being Couturier, which is one of the best. Oh one my of the best god! That was the pick. Ouchie! Yeah. Yeah. Holy! Uh, he's shit. one of the best centers in the league yeah. right now. So traded Jesus. to Philly by Columbus. You want to start? Want to start pumping some uh, teammates' tires right now? Yeah. What's Easy been like since he got into the room? Yeah. He's, he's fu- he doesn't shut up, man. <laughs> Fuck. He just fucking he keeps talking and talking, man. Like I'm like I'm sitting beside him on a plane too. He's the worst car player. <laughs> he's losing just donations. He's, donations. he's losing every every flight. He's just up. he's just pissed. Well, off. he can afford it now. Yeah, yeah he's uh, he's living a life right now. So you spend your summers in Czech now? Czech, uh, about two months in Czech that I moved to Montreal. So you you own a place Montreal. in Montreal? You'll I just rent it out. Oh, all right. So yeah, that's I just your spot. You, you got to be hanging out with Kalorn a little bit in the off season, don't you? Uh, we skate together. Alex Killon, we skate together. I think you guys he's a good golfer too. Fuck. Yeah. Is he a good golfer? Yeah, he's a great golfer. He's a oh, scratch shit. handicap, oh, I think. Yeah. Okay. Where's okay. You? Well, uh, one sec. Uh, let's go back to the music thing. So you're the DJ in the locker room. I'm a DJ in the locker oh, room. Oh, Hazy yeah. must be fighting for that a little bit, no? Oh man, he's got about 500 less games than me, so <laughs> he doesn't have. To, he doesn't. Have, he's got nothing on me. <laughs> Uh, we never had a coach tell me to be out of the league in two years. Uh, fucking shit. yeah! So I play my rock and roll after meetings, and uh, but he's in the locker room. He's there with me. You know, I blast it up all the way up, and just Springsteen, ACDC. Oh, uh, you're old school then, huh? Yeah, we, he's got a couple of good dance moves as well. And uh, you know, it's <laughs> who are your three fun. favorite rock bands? Rock bands: ACDC, U2. Uh, oh yeah, nice. Uh, and I gotta go. Uh, Bruce Springsteen kind of as a fucking rock band. Yeah, Bruce yeah, Springsteen sure. Eastern right? Band. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I ran into him. this guy at Oshiega one year. I'd I'd actually forgot about it. Yeah. It was at uh, Buena Note, which was a supper club. And yeah. I mean, if you couldn't get your, it was like the the Montreal Roxy. If you yeah. couldn't get laid, yeah. you had to check your fucking uh, <laughs> dick in at the coat check on the way yeah, out. Yeah, get out of the and room. Never use done. it again. That was fun. That was a good night. So you must <laughs> be a you must be a big live music guy. Who are some Who are some people you've seen in concert? Like who, who are the best you've seen? Springsteen 15 times. Wow, huh? 
Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, so yeah, if he's, he's playing, you're going I'm anywhere. Going anywhere. I saw I'm him re- twice on Broadway. I saw him live. You know, I was saw that him Broadway show life. sick? It was good. It was different. Right? So for people who don't know, I think it was a really small, like well, small how many venue, people? Five hundred people. Five hundred. That's cool. Small venue. He talks about you know his stories and play some songs. It was a little bit different. It was good though. Good to good to see. What about uh, Eddie Vedder? You big Eddie Vedder guy? I never see Pearl Jam. No, oh. no, I'm not. Uh, I never got into that. You know, never, you never got, got into, into that no, grunge. No, no. I saw ACDC. One of the last concerts they had, and that was unbelievable. ACDC with Brian Johnson. In know, Europe or over here? In Berlin. Oh, jeez. So you're, oh. so you're very old school, but is there anything, any new bands? There's a Philly band, War on Drugs. Are they from Philly? I got. There's yeah. a Philly band. Are, are they from Philly? <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's a sick Philly yeah. band. Oh, are they from yeah. Philly? No, no, no. War on Drugs uh, right hey. now, Biz. <laughs> Time out. Biz is on his own War on Drugs. <laughs> what, do you, no, what do you mean? No, uh, he, no, no, no. Hazy said Sammy Adams that he's not because he's a Boston guy. He's a Boston I like one song from him. Yeah. Which one? Uh, fuck, what's the name, Hazy? Driving Me Crazy. Driving, you yeah. know why? Because the background is from the Annie Lennox song, right? Walking on Broken Walking Glass. Walking on Broken Glass, yeah. So that's the background of his song. He's kind of, you know, redone it, and uh, so the melody is still there, so that's why I like it. So you're a big Holy shit, Voracek. Yeah, yeah. You play the guitar? Yeah. I don't. I don't. Can no, you sing us something? Air, air guitar. Like I, four, four, to, yeah, four, I got a video of him yeah. ripping the air guitar with a hockey stick. 4 a.m. 4 a.m. in a, you know, in bar 23 in Columbus. So I had a couple of good nights there. <laughs> and then, you know, everybody's cleaning up. I plugged my phone in and I was just rocking and rocking. That was a good times back in the day. Can you sing us like a quick verse I of can, a Bruce I can, I can, I can. Yeah, can't but do just it. for no, us, no, no, no. Let's, I, we I, won't I, even play the I'll video. I'll fucking tell you whatever you want. I can't, I can't, I can't sing. I can't sing. I have a terrible voice and then it just, you know. I no, what we'll do is play. what we'll do is we'll go to we'll go to Czech or Montreal, play a little golf, get buckled with him, and then we'll get him singing when we're all drunk. And uh, then we'll, we'll go to a karaoke bar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's um, a good idea. Who are some modern bands? You got to give us a couple. nothing. No, I absolutely hate modern music. I'm the same way. Oh, same old fucking school. old school. Yeah. Like, like, old what's wrong with you? That's cool. No, I, I mean, Hazy with pure music. No. music no. Hazy knows no. like little B O B J O J. He knows every little rapper with all the little little guy. You a, you a Zeppelin fan? You must be I a like Zeppelin l- guy. love Led Zeppelin. Yeah. So when Hazy showed up, he was like he started playing his iPhone in the locker room, right? Like you know the, uh, the hip hop and that kind of shit. So <laughs> I, I go like hit. It won't yeah, fly he's a here, Post Malone tattoo. It's, it's not gonna fly here, buddy. Like come on, like get that shit out of here. You don't you <laughs> won't even give him a couple. What if he gets to pick a couple one, a couple songs, and you guys go on this massive win streak? He, he gets he gets one from five to five fifteen. That's all he gets. <laughs> 5 p.m. to 5.15 before the PK meeting, and then he's done. <laughs> Holy shit, you run a tight system here. Yeah, yeah, hey, I'm because he, he's like, all right, that's PK. I'll worry about power play. Well, yeah. We can do the power play. Music I'm not even invited play. to PK. Fuck. Uh, so, <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> last, uh, oh, last music question. What's the one song you play before you go out for warm-up? What's it this year? I know it changes. I was the DJ in Arizona. Made playoff series in a row. Keep the fucking change. The one song I think the old guys know that I play on the most nights, I would say 70 times out of 82 games, is Atlantic City by Bruce Springsteen. The live version, MTV Unplugged, that's one of the best version that love is. It. That's a jam. Uh, it. Does, it get, jam. does it get you boys going? Because of Hazy and JVR oh, in the Hazy room. catches a quick nap right when the song comes on. I actually really appreciate his music decisions now. Yeah. It's growing on you? I'm the only one in the locker when he plays it. I could throw <laughs> on because they started warming up, right? So I got that 15 minutes just for me, and I'm like, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, and depending it depends on the mood, uh, on the mood, right? Well, so you're an old school guy. I mean, you can just sense it talking to you. And these new young guys, they come in with the I'll say swagger, confidence, a little cockiness. Do you let them hear a little bit, or are you more just all right? I'm gonna deal with how the current young age is. Well, I feel like they're like some of them, or most of them, they're kind of like at the beginning, they're scared of me a little bit for some kind of reason. They probably know you're the guy who'll snap on them. I, I snap a lot. I have, I, you can ask Hazy. Hey, like I have a little bit of anger problem, you know. Once <laughs> all in a while. Che- you're like Laddie Slaps meat a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Laddie, Laddie's fucked up. Like, he's, he's fucking nuts. He's yeah. Best. Yeah. yeah, but. Uh, yeah, so I, I snap, but I'm fine in five ten seconds, right? So they they don't know that. But uh, yeah, a couple of times I had a couple of fucking matches with. Uh, but it's some so guys. different now, huh? Than when you came in. Yeah. Long, it's then everybody's just... tapping your shoulder. Hey, you can't say it. You can't do this. You can't. Come on, they're gonna be scared. Like um, nobody fucking asked me that when I was young. When I got yelled at, <laughs> right? Deal with it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't mean it in a bad way. Yeah, right? it's I just mean, you're way. becoming part of the team. Figure yeah, it out. Yeah, like I mean, just fucking pasta puck. It's easy. <laughs> Who's your favorite young guy right now? Favorite young guy. 
there's always one young guy you you favor and you're not as hard to and you give him benefit of the doubt and maybe if he forgot to pick up his towel you text him like hey i'll get it like jokingly <laughs> as opposed to like hey ching ching motherfucker <laughs> he's not that young anymore but scott lawton was always great lots was always great he was he's old school as well he was always great since the get-go you know uh connect knees nolan patrick was awesome He's a handsome devil yeah, too, eh? Is he yeah. doing all right with the ladies? I, I, I don't, I don't look at him like that. I don't know. But. <laughs> well, I'm saying it's like you, I know which guys I want to roll with because you're yeah. getting residuals, right? He doesn't talk much, you know. Oh, okay. So he's keep it to himself. But uh, connect me quiet. He's or is he a little like chirpy oh, yeah. guy? He's chirpy. He's yeah. like he's like he's a little slow though, you know, like uh, in a good way though. You know what I mean? He's not the shiniest, you know, brightest guy, but <laughs> the he's not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Uh, yeah, no, but uh, and he knows that. But he's 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 a great dude. So you know, like uh, me and Simmer always had a good good time together. Oh when, when man, we were, we were roommates too, and uh, you know, there was a. Uh, I actually have one story. Uh, I hope he's not gonna get mad at me. But uh, <laughs> we'll all my teammates, out. all of my teammates know this story. But uh, so. Uh, we got tr- he get, we got traded in a span of an hour, right? I got traded first. Hour later, he get traded with Braden Shen for Richards. So we get to Philly. We talking about where we are gonna live, and then to be, uh, we had to pick a roommate. So we were like, "All right, you wanna be together?" He was like, "Yeah, sure." So we end up as a roommates. So we go uh, to the Florida to a, uh, do a team building, right? So we get absolutely buckled. <laughs> All right, it's about three thirty a.m. Simmer is already in his room, in our room. So I showed up back in a room he's looking at me like that like you know with his like that stare in his eyes i was like hold and i don't know him right like i'm <laughs> fucking i'm that's the first night with him you know as a roommate like you know wayne simmons i was like fuck what did i do he's looking at me he's like where's my fucking ketchup <laughs> like what <laughs> see me i don't know what you're talking about but he's like, give me my fucking ketchup <laughs> It's 3:30 a.m. Right? Like I'm like I'm I'm waking up in three hours. We have a golf, you know, the next morning. I was like simmer. Like I'm I don't know what the fuck is going on right now. Like I don't know what you're talking about. Just I want to go to bed, man. So I get under the sheets. He's staring me down. He's staying over me. Give me my fucking ketchup right now. I was like, fuck, man. What? He's gonna beat me up. Like what the fuck? Like uh, 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 should I start looking for ketchup around the fucking hotel or what? <laughs> So then he lays down. He's like, my fucking ketchup, man. I was like, fuck, man. Ten minutes later, knock on the door. The fucking room service rolls in with the fucking hamburger and everything. Oh, there is my fucking ketchup, man. <laughs> you know, so he had a hamburger waiting for ketchup, but wanted me to give him the ketchup. But I had no idea what was going on because I just showed up. <laughs> so the next morning I woke up, I was like, Simmer, like, man, like, what, what was that? He was like, what? I was like, well, you wanted the fucking ketchup. He was like, oh, man, that's all good, man. That's just me. Like, when I'm drunk, it's, it's okay. I was like, all right, buddy. We'll, we'll, we'll find a way, you know, sooner or later, I'm sure. And we are one of Did the best you ever friends. have another yeah. another episode after that with the ketchup? Not, ketchup not ketchup. ketchup uh, no, no. But we had, <laughs> we had a couple of good nights every time we went out. He was like, Jakey, you're the only guy that I'm going to listen to. You know, like, when I get a little drunk, I'm going to listen to you. I was like, all right. So, you know, he was being simmer, you know, <laughs> later at night. Like Sam, right? That's a little too much, buddy. Settle on. Like, Shut the fuck up, man! <laughs> Don't you gonna listen to me, man. I was like, fuck. You gotta bar- like, get a bark. Come on, Sam. Like, settle down. He was like, all right, but he like a lot of nights. Like he did listen to me, which was kind of surprising. I could just picture too that like he gets caught going to McDonald's to grab some ketchup to bring home from. He's like, I swear to God, it wasn't for me. It was for Sam. I was just getting him some pints. Yeah, fuck. That was uh, yeah. Simmer was awesome, man. Fuck. That was that was a good time when we were roommates. You wear number 93. Is there any significance to that number? No. I just... Uh, <laughs> was it training, just training camp? camp number? You just kept no, it? No, no, it was... Uh, well, I wanted. I was number 20 in Halifax. Okay. And uh, then I made it to Columbus, and there was Christian Husselius, mm-hmm. the older guy, obviously, yeah. and then RJ Umberger, right? So I was like, there is no way I'm getting number 20. And uh, so I ended up picking 93. There was no really reason, and I guess, you know, I stuck with that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's your number now. I, I can't think of anyone else who wears number 93 uh, in the league right now. Uh, uh, one thing I want to ask JVR, I forgot to, Carter Hart, We, I mean, we talked about his name and stuff, but young goalie coming in, Philly's a very difficult town. They're very hard on their goaltenders, and they're waiting for that next guy. How is he handling it as a young guy with, with that much pressure on his shoulders? Uh it kind of surprised me how well he handled it you know because he's like you said he's 21 years old he's uh there's all that pressure basically on his shoulders right now that uh, since i don't know hexy maybe everybody yeah, was looking absolutely. for you know yeah. 
They've looked for like 25, 30 years, it feels yeah. like. Well, they hit and miss with Briz, right? It's <laughs> kind of a big miss there. But uh. you, got our, you got our sloppy seconds in Arizona there. <laughs> Everyone thought he was going to be the savior. And he, yeah, he was, he was lights out for us. like, that ain't going to work. Uh, you know what? I got uh, to say one thing. He was, his stats, especially the second year, the lockout year, they weren't as bad as people think. You know what I mean? He was just pretty good. He was just a little bit different, you know, so. Yeah, this is not a town that unless you're dominating, if you're like the weird guy in the media, they're just not going to take it in, in good sense. Like, I mean, this is the type of city. If you you can do that, if you're lighting it up. Yeah, he didn't do himself a favor. That's yeah. for sure. It you was know? crazy because you guys had the outdoor game and then he was doing all those weird interviews and he wasn't playing well and. It, it, yeah, that's what I'm it saying. It's a just, weird it, time. Yeah, he had this like uh, a tea ready for you know. That's my tea for you know when I'll be on a bench tomorrow and like fucking around. Yeah, like exactly. That. Were you were, as well, as teammates? Were you guys a little upset about that? Yeah, yeah. Like you, you know. Like I mean, you're making you, a joke. Like you can, you can, you can, you can fuck around once in a while. Like if even if you don't play well, you kind of made a, like a you know slightly joke about that once in a while. But like, you know, he was doing it every day. At the point, he was like, just hey, buddy, just. You know, yeah, you're not funny on. anymore. Just shut the fuck up and play the goal. Like, <laughs> Stop the puck. Stop the puck, dude. Yeah, uh, please. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. yelling, shut please. up, shut up please. and sing at, a, at an artist who's talking like why you, politics. Why you have state. to be mad? Because I'm looking at your fucking save percentage. That's <laughs> yeah. all. Because I just got another minus. <laughs> fuck. Yeah. Well, dude, yes. thank you so much for coming in, man. This uh, has been awesome. Thanks for, thanks for Anything you want to ask R.A.? <laughs> <laughs> anything about Commodore? You remember anything else about Commodore? Yeah. Any other uh, stories about that goon? Uh, actually, I was preparing for this for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so I had three stories. I had similar story with the ketchup, yep. which I said. I had uh, one story with Kami, and I have one more story with the axe. Yes. Oh, with. for so, fuck's sake. This is just I was like, preparing. Can I say? I would say I have a lot more, but I can't really say them, right? So, this is uh, perfect. So I'll, I'll go with, uh, with Kami. So we have a rookie party in Vancouver, and uh, my rookie party. So I show up to my room. I don't know what time it was, and Comey has a, his friend there, you know, some girl. So we were roommates, so I was like, all right, I'm going to bed. So I, I lie down, I fall asleep. 7.30 a.m., I woke up, I needed to take a piss. I look I look over, there is only the girl in the bed, right? No Comey. I was like, what the fuck? So I look around, Comey nowhere. So I, you know, like move, I try to step on the ground. There is Comey on the ground, laying naked. Imagine his body, six foot five, fucking red Sasquatch, just <laughs> laying there, <laughs> naked, no pillow, no blanket, just snoring. Right? I was like, oh my god! It, so this is the NHL, all right? <laughs> but like, just that picture, it's, it's it's you know, it's gonna be stuck in my head for the rest of my life. You know, this big is Vancouver hairy, on the big road. Big hairy chest, just you know, laying on the ground, no pillow, no blanket. Boris got a lot of hotel room stories. Yeah. So uh, that was one of them, and. Uh, <laughs> I'll uh, say the one with the axe. <laughs> so we were neighbors my first year here, right? I live on a second floor. He lives on a third floor. So I showed up at 2.30 a.m. from the bar with one of my ex-teammates and two girls. We show up in my place. I turn on the music, right, pretty loud. So then I hear, you know, from above, just stepping on the ground, shut the fuck up, right? <laughs> so I turn it down a little bit. So we keep going. It's like 3, 3.15. And then I see Yags walking into my apartment with a hat, running sneakers, shorts, and a jacket. You know, and I'm buckled, right? <laughs> like it's 3.15, I'm buckled, we have a day off the next day. I'm looking at him, I was like, oh, where are you going, Yags? He was like, oh, I gotta go for a run. So he's like famous of working, you know, like whenever he- Of course. Goes. So I was like, all right, well, you know, this guy's fucking 40. It's 3.15, I'm buckled, he's going for a fucking run. Go <laughs> figure, right? <laughs> You're like, yeah. this guy's been yeah. playing for 30 years. He's running, and yeah. I'm I thought you were going to say you put on your running shorts and joined him. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I was too tired from dancing all night. Would he ever try to drag you to the, or like, because he would go skate at like 10 o'clock, right? I went a couple times with him, yeah. And then I you're like, couple enough times. of this. Yeah, I went a couple times with him, but, you know, like, you want to sleep too sometimes, right? Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. He's well, going you had to catch up on sleep because a lot of these stories are ending at 3, 30, 4 o'clock. So, uh, it was, that was back in the day, though. Like, I don't, you know, I'm... I'm oh, yeah, the league's changed. I'm, so is Jake. I'm 30 years old right now. I, I can't do it anymore. Yeah, so you're bringing your video games on the road now, then? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't do that. I don't I don't play video games. All right. No, I don't. I don't. I, I go for dinner. I'll have a couple with dinner. Grinnell, you got anything for, for Mr. Voracek, the champagne, champagne Don? We didn't really talk about the champagne yet. 
That's what I was going to ask. You got to tell the Champagne Dawn story. At least one. Champagne. Well, there's a lot of them. <laughs> Again, back in the day. Uh, He's like, uh, well, there was nine years of bottles every night. Which story do you want? <laughs> no, every time we went out, I was uh, uh, I was ordering champagne everywhere I went, right? So I enjoy champagne with uh, you know by itself or with orange juice. So I was, you know, there was a Dom Perignon, you know, everywhere, every time I went somewhere. So I remember JVR had a one good night on a, on a <laughs> in a good old recess, right? Back in the day, your first, my first year here. Yeah, when you see fucking triple. <laughs> 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 He's, JVR and Hazy were saying you guys could be at Applebee's and this guy would be ordering champagne <laughs> you know, off the five dollar menu. I haven't done it in in a long time, five six years maybe. All right. Uh, well, well, when we when we come visit him in Montreal, we can. Rip well, it up we're gonna we're gonna pop uh, bottles of Pink Whitney now instead. We gotta okay, send you guys some we'll stuff. Like Quick it, plug. That's for sure. Yeah. That move. All well, right, thanks so much, Jake. Appreciate thanks for it. having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed that interview. Thanks again to Boinkies for their support of Spit and Chicklets and the ECHL Player Relief Fund. Make sure to check out boinkies.com and enter promo code BIZ20 for 20% off all their products. We out.